Welcome back to Downward Spiral, Downward Spiral, Downward Spiral, where it's never ogre. I like that I just shamelessly, shame, 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 shame us. So, uh, <laughs> I played VR games for the first time. Well, a VR game for the first time. I played Job Simulator. Job. Because Will has a computer that, unlike the Nintendo Smart Toaster, uh, it works and does things. <laughs> and it's pretty cool. I feel like I'm in the future. It's like 1996. It's great. Um, and I, I played Job Simulator as a, a, a little retail clerk in a world of, of friendly robots that uh, made me do shit for no money. And it was great. Uh, except for the part where it was all a psyop! <laughs> Let me tell you about how after that, what was that, like 30 minutes? Probably at least, at least 30 minutes. 20 minutes? Yes, 25, um, 30 minutes. You know, be before the show, I, uh, I, I went to the bathroom, right? Yeah, Just no one peeked on you. Drew? has the talking sick. <laughs> Go for it. Yes, I do. Thank you. <laughs> I'm fine. I'm fine. I'll be better if you like, comment, and subscribe. But for now, I'm fine. That was the worst pooping experience I've ever had. Oh my gosh. And I didn't even have diarrhea. Let me tell you why it was so horrible. Because the VR, it seeped into my brain. I'm, I'm scrolling on my phone. I'm just like checking my email and stuff, you know, making sure I, like I got my phone on, on silent for the show. And I'm like, I'm like scrolling with my thumb and, you know, it's like I should be holding down the trigger button. <laughs> Wait a minute. No, I don't have it. No, Drew. Drew, it's OK. And then I'm like scrolling on, the, on like the Twitter timeline and like the screen's going up. and I'm like, wow, this feels smooth. It's kind of like when I was moving like the turnstile and I didn't have to hold the Drew. No! no! <laughs> and then, as I'm like as I'm like flushing the toilet and going to wash my hands, I'm like, wait a minute. I could be being recorded right now. Because <laughs> Ryan has a fucking back room's bathroom where you can see through the top because it's like a little room cut out in a larger basement area. Only because there's a pipe that has to come through and we... We had to put, like, drywall around it. Yes, with your aqueduct excuses, of course. <laughs> but, like, now Will's approximately one foot three, but if he, got, <laughs> if he got on a big enough step ladder, he could do the phone thing. Because, again, I was playing for, like, 20, 30 minutes, and then I take off my headset, like, halfway through, because someone's poking my beard, and I keep thinking it's the cord. And I see him, and he's recording! <laughs> so, like, if... Cause I, how are you guys doing? The psyop was successful, <laughs> needless to say. Welcome to Moon Friends. Your pregnancy's gotta be successful when I'm done with you. <laughs> oh, oh my oh god! Lord. Nine minutes and I'm Hey, you don't want to happen? Don't record me in my most vulnerable state. Uh, I'll uh, I'll email you the footage later, Ryan. Thank you. Yes. I. Just something shared between Sugar Shelly and me. It's yeah, fine. you know, it's all good. Sugar Shell Bell, it's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, He's a right bell end, that, that, that boy. <laughs> I have a right gun in my left and shoot my fucking brains out. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, here's our tier list of 2023 games. And my suffering. Well, it's not a tier list, it's just... It's so, 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 last time we were brought together, we, we horrible, discussed horrible the... Horrible memories. <laughs> we discussed. Um, we discussed um, the games we played in 2023 that came out before 2023. Yeah, that's that was last time. Uh, significantly shorter list uh, due to uh, what economy? <laughs> Basically, I would have played more games. I would have liked to have played stuff like. Uh, um, what was the one, like, Mario Wear Move It I would have liked to have played. Yeah, I didn't get around to that either. Um. Or Mario RPG. Yeah, I didn't get to play that. Um, Pikmin 4, I would have been, I, I played the demo for that, but I'm not really counting that as, like, a full experience. Right. So, we're, we're only, the, the rules for this list is games we have completed. Games we have, like, sunk more than enough time into to get an actual experience. Like, if, if credits roll, you basically, yes, you can talk about it here, but, um, other than that, just 
just nice games. Yeah, the only other weird caveat is that Will's here, but like, you know, we'll deal with it. I've been here for like the past three recordings. Can you shut up? Shut up, fucking. Excuse me, but this is the third recording. I've been here past two. It's the third recording where I've had to deal with two Ryans. That's. Listen, I didn't bring there is, my... There is, a nice comedic, not, there is a nice comedic effect, because one of them is way, way smaller than the other. So, God. you know, at least Are you suggesting that. I'm the fun size, Ryan? I didn't say... The you, happy meal. Let's not throw out the F like that, okay? This is a Christian stream. Listen, butthead, I didn't bring my fucking laptop and VR headset for you to poo-poo all over me. I didn't play VR games to be recorded for the CIA. All right. Listen, it was a once in a lifetime Listen, opportunity. I'm sorry, but you were very amused. It was very funny. Oh, that makes me feel so much better. You I were like a roller coaster ride that none of us rode. Exactly. No, you were riding me. I could feel it. So, well, and that wasn't me. Oh, you're right. That was your sister. Now, Whoa. can we please talk about videos game yes. before I fucking so, spill myself on my bath? Okay, it's almost spilled my drink there. Careful. You, you deserve it. You almost spilled your own drink too, Goober. It's got a... It doesn't have the cap on. Yeah, weenie. <laughs> so, so I'm first, right? Yeah. Okay, getting right into it. Uh, one of the earlier releases last year, Metroid Prime Remastered, so I, I I questioned putting this on at first because I have played a bit of Metroid Prime on the Wii U. Uh, the controls were far too difficult for me to handle. Yes. Uh, I mean, not just that, but like even when they got easier, it still wasn't like a really fun experience. Yeah. Uh, the, the graphics were a bit outdated. And I couldn't really tell fully what I was comprehending. Very smoky and everything. Uh, Metroid Prime Remaster cleared a lot of that up for me. Um, much better in terms of atmosphere and like the creepy vibe that Metroid always goes for when it's like exploring new planets and shit. Yeah. And as far as that goes, really like I really enjoyed it up until the end. Like it was just really, re really engaging and like not too hard. Like th there was a lot of challenges where I was kind of like wondering what to do, but like I usually figured it out by the seat of my own wit. Like. I don't think I got every single power up or anything, but I, I did get like the majority. Yeah, it's and, not like they're all necessary. You know, it's mostly yeah, exactly. just like five more missiles. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And um, so that was really fun too. Um, especially the last boss is really engaging and like I mean, yeah, probably like the the most engaging boss of that game. But um, but most fun boss I would say because there's a lot of like phases that go on that you can really do things about. There's uh, one. Uh, that was told to me called the Omega Pirate that's kind of a pain in the ass and it is but uh, it's much better when you have gyro controls off yeah. so there's that um, other than that though it's it was really just very good atmosphere very good like sci-fi experience game and I can't really fault it for anything other than that I, I hope they make uh Metroid Prime 2 and 3 remaster I hope down the line because it's it was definitely worth its experience I don't know if it was worth the what was it like $50 price tag or no no it was 40 yes we were surprised right. at how low it was mm. uh $40 so I I you know what $40 I would say I think I got my money's worth yeah. I think that was more than enough and especially for the quality that I really experienced in the game I think it was really good so as far as Metroid Prime Remaster goes, I'm I'm all for it. The one question I find myself wanting to ask you is, in your experience, do you think this is the prettiest Switch game? Because I've heard it's a series contender. Really? Um, you know, I, I always... I think prettiest is subjective. Mm -hmm. I, I think art is kind of like a teach-their-own type thing. For me, I, I really like the Breath of the Wild style. I really like the, the French painting-esque style of it. Yeah. Um, that's more my speed. I will say this is the prettiest game other than that, because th this this game has a lot of depth of depth of field as far as like your, your colors and your atmosphere and everything, and just the way everything's set up, it is very like sci-fi movie. Like yeah. you get the feeling you are in a sci-fi movie, and that's that's the biggest praise I could po po possibly give this game because there's no there's no like contender for that on the Switch other than Metroid Prime Remastered because like you could say 
uh, Metroid Dread, but like Metroid Dread was just a bit, a bit different. Yeah, it was a lot cleaner. It was, uh, pr I guess that would be my definition of like it was like shinier. Yeah, it wasn't as uh, as like earthy. Yeah, at, at, like earth tones and that's, grass tones. That's the thing too is a lot of Metroid Dread, it, like Fusion, it takes place all within like one confined science station. Yeah. Whereas Prime is one of those Metroid games where you're going through natural environments. You're going through magma caverns. You're, you're seeing going plants, through, yeah. Like glaciers, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, and you're getting to experience all these different uh, things that are really, really fascinating. And so... Yeah, Prime one's got a, got a cool world. Plus, you just keep feeling in Prime like... Like nothing's stopping you. Like yeah. Once you like defeat us, it's like okay, except just for keep the going. beginning where Samus gets football tackled and loses all of her shrubs yeah. from the previous game. Getting Metroided is one of the biggest, most annoying things that happens <laughs> in every single Metroided. game. Metroided. Metroided. That's what it's called. Getting Metroided. I did not know that. At least to me, it, to me it is because it's like I, I use that term for other games where it's like, oh, this character's got all these established skills. Oh, never mind. He gets Metroided. I've heard of Pac-Man screen and Contra syndrome. Like for instance, Metroided. Uh, that's new. Like for I, instance, uh, Link in Breath of the Wild to choose the king and he got metroided. Yeah. He, I just he used, lost all of his things. I just used the term nerfed. I mean, n nerfed though is, I think, a specific thing where it's like, oh, you you had this power up, but like through updates you lost it. That's what I think. Of yeah, I suppose, you're, I suppose yeah. you could be... Metroided is, like is game to game. Yeah, yeah, like, like I always think of like when a Smash character, like they're their upbeat doesn't have as much damage as it previously did after an update. That's a nerf. That's what yeah. I think of as a nerf. Like, they still have that technique, but it, it's got it less damage. It doesn't do what it did yeah. before, so yeah, that, that's what I think, but, um... Gotcha. Um, I think if anyone got Metroided, it's you, because apparently I've, I've gotten you on the... Uh, I, You've been Chozo-pilled. I, I got you to play Metroid Dread, and then now, now here you are playing one of the 3D games. Well, I think a while ago we did a... For anyone who wants to look it up, we did a podcast i think on metroid Correct. and i think yes. we put uh a few other games at the end of that uh oh yeah i think we talked about um sonic frontiers i think we did a little bit something like that i can't remember but like the what basically what what happened though was i said that metroid dread was everything i've been told about metroid yeah and it was all the hype in one single package i don't know if the experience would have been better if i started with dread or uh, started with uh, Prime Remastered, but I think it's better this way because yeah, cause I, I get to see the shinier version. Oh, no, this is all the glitz and glamour. It's like okay, now this is the murky undertone. Right. Like, this is what you're. This is what people kind of look forward to. Like you have all the all the colors and graphics on the SNES, and then you have this game that's all foggy and yeah, and gross and stuff. And it's just like it, it fits totally. But also. I mean, for one, the, the games honestly are so different, it, just in terms of, like, control style and... Oh, of course. You know. Well, they're two to totally different beasts. One's a three-platformer, the other's 2D side-scroller, so... Right. Um, but also, you went from 2D to 3D, which is a, a natural progression. Yeah. Which I I, I... I don't typically go for, but when it's a story that's engaging me and it's an experience unto its own, I can't, I can't fault it, can't complain. Yeah. I enjoyed it, but uh, that's that's basically my re my review of. Uh, if anything, uh, I don't know if I'd give it a star rating out of ten or like out of ten, but like if I if I did, I think this might be like two. I'd say eight, eight out of ten. Like it was really really engaging and like good. and granted, like teleportation isn't really a thing in this game, so sometimes you find yourself going through the same old corridors over again to get to Yeah, the especially places. with Magmore Caverns, yeah. because it's, it's like, it's, very it's repetitious. in the middle of every other area. Very repetitious, very, it, it can easily get old, but, um, I found myself finding new things every, every time I was around, or, like, testing out new methods on enemies and stuff, so. Yeah. So, there, so there's that, but, um, other than that, I can't really get mad at the game or anything. So. I mean, it is literally a Halo clone, so, you know, you take what you can get. Okay. So, I've always know. loved my puzzle platformers. <laughs> um, I don't think we mentioned this earlier since we started recording. We're not talking about Tears of the Kingdom. <laughs> well, uh, I'll, I'll give, like, a very brief Cliff Notes version of it. Um, as far as, like, what to talk about, there's just, just really, like, 
I mean, we had a whole uh, yeah, we had a whole upload show. about it. So. But the summation of my thoughts is, like Breath of the Wild, I enjoyed that game, but it's ultimately not my cup of tea. I have a bit more to say on it, so that that's for later. But well, you can make it for now. No, I, I let my throat heal a bit. I, I just did a whole segment on <laughs> Metroid Prime Remastered. <laughs> okay. So what's your game? Um, maybe I'll just. Yeah, we'll just go in the order I played these. Um, I'm also going to start with a new game that's not new. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, Kirby's Return to Dreamland Deluxe. This is actually one on my list, too, so we're covering two with one stone. Oh, there we go. Okay, so we'll, we'll do two at once. So, although I will say, uh, Will, have you uh, at all... Because Will has watched quite a, quite a bit of our, our stuff. Have you watched at all our Return to Dreamland? Um... I know you saw one episode technically with us. Yeah, I'm about to say. I, I think. Uh, I think that's honestly, it's fake fan. <laughs> no, it's fine. Um, it is <laughs> for now. But for now, no. I'd rather threaten him now. Threatening him later is not as interesting to me. I guess that's fine. But um, could we return to Dreamland Deluxe? Uh, you want to start it off? I actually want to hear what you have to say because this is your first time playing the game whereas I've played this a couple times before and I feel like I don't have as much to say well I, I so for the playthrough you basically played uh, Return to Dreamland I played it a little bit I didn't go all the way to, up to the boss right um, but for Return to Dreamland Deluxe it was basically everything I expected it to be it was it was a very fun remastered experience um, a little heavy on the uh the, like outlines yeah i actually like that change it's it's not bad but i don't know like when it's on kirby all the time i kind of get like this weird feeling about it. i don't know um that's understandable i don't know it, kirby to me just feels like this bright pink character and he's got like a black shadow around it just like it, it feels like too too outlined almost but it, other than that i didn't really notice it much um but yeah, I, I enjoy the new, like, the two new power-ups in that game, the, the oh, Sand, yeah, and, uh, sand Me and Mecha. Yeah, yes. Sand, which can just conquer fucking anything. <laughs> and uh, Mecha, which is a, a pretty pretty neat technical ability. Um, yeah, it's it's definitely the one you have to take the time to master more. Yeah. It is worth it, because those lasers that you can charge up in a couple seconds if you get it down right, uh, those shave off health like nothing else. <laughs> No, they, um, the only other thing I would say is, uh, as far as gameplay, I, I can't really say much other than what I said with, um, Kirby Return to Dreamland, which is it's fun. Yeah. I, uh, it's not my favorite. I think that still belongs to, uh, Forgotten Lands. Yeah, of course. I mean, Return to Dreamland, Kirby in general, but Return to Dreamland, it's, it's standard. It, yeah, it's standard. I, I can't fault it at all for being anything less than what I thought it was, and it's it's good. And uh, I do enjoy the... I did enjoy a lot of the, like, mini-games at the park. They were kind of fun little challenges. Um, I, I wish... Unfortunately, I did not get to play... You're kidding me! I did not get to play... No! The, uh, the Magalore. That's the best part of the game! I... I Maggie! Yeah, I wanted to play it. I just, but I ran into financial trouble and I had to sell a lot of my games. So before okay. I before I got to play it, I uh, I it, got rid of the game. It's unacceptable, but I understand. <laughs> well, it was like it was one of those things where I we were kind of debating like, should I play it on the show for that new experience type thing? And I was kind of just like, oh, I don't know. Should I wait? Should I wait? Should we wait till we get a better computer? And so I just didn't play it. But I was like, okay, well, I'm just gonna keep the game and. Than financial troubles, right? So um, I, I wasn't sure. But no, it's a lot of fun. Um, the a brief summary of it is, um, it's combo focused. You start out really weak with just like one kind of spell, and then you not only get more powers as you go along, but you get stronger versions of your powers. Usually, you like charge them up longer for bigger blast radiuses and stuff, or like multi-hit attacks. Um, and the levels reward you for higher and higher combo strings. Oh, okay. Um, and the more points you get, the closer you'll be to leveling up um, to get more abilities. And okay. it is very fun. You do end up feeling like you're a boss character by the end of it. Hmm. Um, also, very good music. 
Which, I mean, I know with Kirby, that's like another news the sky is blue, but yeah. very good music. It almost gave me Planet Robobot vibes, because it's, um, it definitely leans into, the, like, the electronic side of things. I'm trying to go for a different feel with Magalore, so. Yeah, and it works, because you're, you're in, like, a torn apart, uh, dimensional rift. Yeah. So, yeah, that, that kind of instrumentation works really well. But, does, um, does he get back home? He... Uh, he gets back somewhere. <laughs> so, all right, yeah, I might as well explain this for the show because it'd be more fun that way. So, this game makes a free-to-play video game canon. Uh, so, yeah, here we go, Kirby lore. Kirby lore. Dee -dee 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 -dee. That's the theme song. Okay. I'll, I'll try to add a little graphic. Uh, just be DVD. Just so, dancing. um, Triple Deluxe on 3DS had a little. Oh wait, you've played Triple Deluxe, so I can explain this to you. Uh, the Kirby Clash side mode, where there's like four classes and you're defeating enemies together. Mm -hmm. So they made a, a free-to-play eShop game, um, and in the hub there is a green and white instead of blue and yellow Magalore, and he sells you gem apples which you pay for with real money to get the fake currency because he's... I can't make this joke. <laughs> he got a board. He's very greedy. He's, a. Uh... He's covering his mouth? No, just... He doesn't He doesn't have a mouth. Well, he doesn't... <laughs> anyway. Uh, well, he might under that uh, scarf or whatever. No, he doesn't. Okay. Uh, but... Um, Remember how it is, it's all going to click for you when I say this. Mm. In Magalore Epilogue, um, he's, he's wearing, like, white tattered robes. Mm -hmm. And then they become green at the end of the game. <laughs> and um, also, you're collecting gem apples. Is that how it goes? Gem apples are involved in the game. Um, okay. And he, he takes some with him to this other dimensional rift. You know, throughout the the game, you get more dialogue from him. He's like, man, you know, I like I like being uh, like pulling pranks on people and shit, and like taking advantage of people. But like Kirby and friends, made me realize I, I want I want to be a nicer person so that I can make friends again and redeem myself. Um, and by the end of the game, he's like, okay, well, wherever I end up, uh, even if I don't get back home, I'm I'm gonna strive to be a nicer person. Uh, so he. Uh, <laughs> he becomes the shopkeeper for a free-to-play game, which is like, uh, it's a good start. I guess it's something. <laughs> <laughs> I guess good for you. But yeah. you know what? Um, the Kirby's Dream Collection, a video game compilation, is also canon. Because, um, you know the bonus stages in Return to Dreamland that take place on the ship and they're all like wooden and stuff? Yeah. Um, Magalore built those, and in Kirby's Dream Collection, there are more of them. The oh. plot of Kirby's Dream Collection is Magalore built an amusement park to make up for trying to destroy the universe. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so I like, mean... Here you go, Kirby. You, you like roller coasters, right? Candy? Yeah. I mean, I guess if you're gonna try and redeem yourself, that's one way to do it. Yeah. I think one of my favorite quotes by you is, uh... Every you said this in something else, but you were like, every Kirby game is fun until someone points a gun at the planet. Yeah, <laughs> and, and it's like, yeah, that's pretty much what happens every time. But it's okay because he uh, he put a bandaid on the planet and he said, "I'm sorry, I'm sorry." So it's okay. That's good. Magalore is a very good egg. Out of ten, be a good egg. <laughs> All right. Um. So wait, did I rate this time right? Um, who goes next? Me, because Will's on the middle right. No, Will goes now. Okay. Do I? I think. I don't know. I'm very tired. <laughs> <laughs> so since I already talked about <clears throat> these kinds too before, I'm just going to move on to my... Oh, that's right. That part where you failed. Listen, I thought... Failed. We went over the or Whatever. I'm too you tired. You get one forgiveness. Thank you. My, my my minus one forgiveness point. You can see. <laughs> Anyways, so stats. I literally only have one game to talk about in this entire recording. That oh, hey. is the TikTok sensation that is Lethal Company. Lethal Company. So, what it is, it's a PC game. 
it's kind of a horror collectathon. So you play as these little spacemen that work for the company, which totally cares about you and your well-being and would never just send you off to their doom for their own capitalist greed. Mm -hmm. Capitalist? Capitalist greed. It's okay. like capitalist, but shit. Okay. Anyways. So capitalist. Yes. <laughs> but anyways, so... It's a multiplayer focused game too. It's really fun with a group of friends. You just go to these random planets, like they're hostile planets, and you collect scrap. And then you collect scrap and you get money for the scrap, and then you take it back to headquarters where your boss, literally Cthulhu, will eat the scrap and you get paid. And you have to meet a profit quota by like a certain amount of time. Hmm. The only problem is, on all these planets are creatures that want you, that want you dead. And there's a bunch of different ones. There's loot bugs, there are giant, faceless dogs, mm -hmm. and there are absolutely horrifying ones like Spring Guy, who works like Slender Man, where he doesn't move if you're looking at him, but as soon as you turn your back, he'll like rush you, and it's like fucking terrifying. High impact sexual violence. Literally, <laughs> yeah. There's a bunch of different monsters. I'm usually, I'm going to say this now, I'm not a horror game guy, like, mm -hmm. at all. I will avoid, yeah, I. I, I avoid horror genre stuff, like, as a role in general. But my friends finally coaxed me into trying it, and I'm like, ugh, fine. I was like, you know, it's simplified graphics, it doesn't look super realistic. Maybe I'll try it, maybe it'll be fun. It is fun, I do like it, and it can be pretty scary at times, but... Excuse me. I think it's it's a pretty fun game overall, and I it, you just really need to get a good crew for it. Um, <clears throat> one thing I remember one scene that happened in particular was me and my crew with my Discord buddies. We went to this basically a big mansion, and we were searching it. And one of them found um, you know the play mask, like the happy face and the sad face, the yeah. opera mask. Yeah. One of them found something like that, and he's like, "Oh, cool!" And he, and he said, "Should I put it on?" And he said, "Yeah, I think you know you get like some sort of power up if you do." He put this on, and the mask proceeds to possess him and his soul, and he's literally chasing us down and eating our souls out. <laughs> anyway, so we're running away. He gets to me, catches up to me, and devours me, soul wise. And so, like, does he just, like, the, his character just instantly dies? Kind of, yeah. And then, like, your character is possessed by, like, the demon and will eat everyone else. Like, so you can't do anything. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You, you just have to run away, really, and just outrun them. And, but, you know, anyways, he gets to me. My other two buddies, they make it back to the ship. And on the ship, we have a teleportation device. So where if someone's stranded or if someone's, like, in a, like, a corner and they're lost, we can just teleport them back to the ship. So they decided, well, if Will's still there, can we get him? Like, can we teleport him? They didn't know that I was possessed. And it was like, does it fix him if we teleport him? Or is it like, you know, still mm -hmm. demon Will? So he t we teleport him. And my friends look at the teleport. He sees me come in and it was like, oh, there's Will. Oh, my God. And he my just gosh. gets his face eaten off. It's, Jeez. it is, it was, and we, it's, we spectate him too. When you're dead, you can yeah, spectate the other players. It was fucking hilarious. I, I will say, um, cause you seem to be much more of a multiplayer style gamer. Have, has any of the talk that we have had about Metroid Dread being a creepier style, uh, single player game, give you any interest in that game at all? Um, I've never really been much into Metroid. Per se. Not even Metroid. Like, listen, I'm not into, like, super Metroid lore. Mm -hmm. But, like, I, I just kind of pick it up through what I hear. But, um... Right. Just the fact that I not only give that game a high rating, but, like... Do you resonate, I guess, with any of, of the things I have said about that game? Just being like, hey, this is... It sounds interesting. Stuff, the way you describe that, it sounds very atmospheric... <laughs> and kind of more of a creepy bit game. Yeah, nothing in Metroid is scary. Yeah, no, I, I, I know that. Yeah, it's it's a Metroid game. It's like heart pumping sometimes, like when uh, for um, Metroid Dread, when like certain things are after you that you know, like if you get caught by one, it's basically like okay, you're you're dead. But mm -hmm. uh, with Metroid Prime, it's a lot more relaxed and kind of like health based and everything. So it's just like just doing what you can. 
Yeah, it, it sounds um, it sounds like a pretty interesting game. I'll probably have to look into it a little bit. Is, which one was it? What's called again? Metroid Prime. Prime. Metroid Prime Remastered on Prime Switch. Remastered. Uh, okay. When did the original Prime come out? Two thousand one. Yeah, I think it's wow. two thousand one. Uh, it was on GameCube, and um, GameCube. And uh, yeah, it was like. I, I wish I still had the game and had a. I wish uh, I could have my sister l- l- like l- loan the Switch to you because. Oh, I have I have a Switch. Oh yeah, yeah he's just I a fake fan. Yeah, uh, it's well. just collecting dust on my dresser right now. Well, hey, uh, if you ever find a sale for that game, it's usually forty bucks. But I, I don't know. I, I, and I at this it, point, he could get a used copy for like thirty or twenty. Yeah, yeah. like they wouldn't be too much, and they're really like uh, there's a few at a that disc replay place that I took. Oh shop. yeah, okay. So there's that, but um, yeah. Other than that, I was just curious to see. Is there anything else you wanted to say about that? Uh, Lethal Company. Um, I I give it a um, five out of ten scares. <laughs> the no, it's, no, it's it's more like a eight out of ten. It's a pretty good game, honestly. I did want to add one little addendum, um, because obviously I haven't played the game, but I've seen people like Jerma play the game, mm-hmm. and um. The one thing I think would enhance your experience, it's, it's kind of unorthodox, but um, if someone's recording you while you're playing, then you'd have a HORRIBLE TIME! Not that you would understand! People just aren't camera shy like you sometimes. Yeah. Okay, but it's different when someone tells me they're gonna whip out the camera. Then at least I know it's coming. You had like, you, you took the headset off like several different times, how did you not see Will? Yeah. I just didn't. I don't know. Like, he I was can't right really... in your face. I mean, I am one foot three side, according to you, so I probably yeah, was under I the table. I guess according to Drew's logic, he is one foot. Yeah, three, so, so I was probably under the table like a little troll going. Filming <laughs> 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 his crotch for online purposes. I. All right, Ryan. Can I, would you like to talk about that? Got to zoom in on that. That uh. That fat man. Zoom in on you shutting up, Ryan. Next game. <laughs> Respectfully. <sighs> Hashtag respectful. Hashtag. Are you still talking? The next game I, I played, it was Little Gator Game. Oh, yeah. The, oh, that did come out this year. It's te- technically, I think it came out 2022 December, but I didn't play it until... I, I'm just calling it. It's close enough. Wait, I'm going to double check because if you're wrong, I want to call you wrong. Uh, it came out... Well, when did it come out on Switch, though? I, I know it came out on PC. It... Wait. What? No, December 2022. Hashtag fake fan. Okay. Okay. But, um, either way, I still count this as a... Because I didn't play it until 2023, but, um... But the, we, we had the little blood kids with me. <laughs> <laughs> It's okay. It's okay. It's all I right. Get, listen, if I give Will a pass, then I can have a pass as well. Okay. Oh, I see how it works. Okay. Yeah, you have to start the the. I so, forget. I forgot so, what words were. In my so head. I have to fuck up first, but if, as long as everyone else does it, it's okay. Yeah, that sounds like what I was okay. thinking. Okay. Anyway. Uh. What just? What was that? <laughs> I, no. Who am I? Tuesday, but <laughs> who's recording? The ice and mine. I have to hold on the trigger. The ice and mine. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's grip run. It's grip, Drew. It's grip. Okay. The ice in my cup just rose to the top, but um. It means you're watching me. <laughs> <laughs> there's, Drew, there's, there's a microphone in the ice cube. So. Wait, there's a microphone on my tree. <laughs> okay. Okay. Grab the hot dog. So. Take out the headset, Drew. Take out the headset. <sighs> Fucking damn it. Okay. Sean, you are not awake. <laughs> Who's Sean? Wake up. <laughs> okay. Shut up. So, Little Gator Game is the adorable, wholesome story of a brother and sister, older sister, younger brother, and the brother just wants to play. And he wants to... Basically, his sister... Uh helped him develop his imagination. She made cardboard or like wooden things for him to to beat up as a as a, when he was a kid. So she would make these little challenges for him. And um, 
as she grows older, though, she's she's going to college. She's getting ready to go to college, and he just wants to keep playing. And he always wants to keep playing, but uh, unfortunately, the sister has kind of, you know, she kind of reaches her her point of like, listen, I gotta study. Like, I can't keep doing this. And it's it's a bit heartbreaking at the beginning, but um, it's a lot like Breath of the Wild style gameplay, but like for babies. But like, <laughs> but but the thing is, I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> Take my money. Take my money now. Well, I mean, it's like a very kiddie atmosphere. Yeah. Like, it's it's not like a bacoblin's gonna kill you or anything. You don't really like die in this game. Right. There's no like death. There's just um. There's just like you not doing the objectives. It's it's whatever you want to do the game. Like you have you have a stamina wheel at the beginning for climbing. You have um, your friends who are trying to help you get your sister to play. Then they go off and do their own thing saying, hey, you know, we tried to help. We couldn't. We're going to go do our own thing. And then you end up helping them. But you start. This is also similar to Breath of the Wild. You start in a small island and then you get to the big island where all the adventure happens. And it's not nearly as big as Breath of the Wild. Not nearly, but um, if anything, I would say, gosh, the even the whole of the map is less than the Great Plateau. But yeah, I get it's, But it's still quite the size. And um, the character that you play as is, is like, every character is like a little, like, polygonal animal. And... It's a very fun, artistic style game where it's self-shaded, I believe, and um, you just acquire things as you go and just have your adventure, and slowly you are turning the playground into your own, like, base of operations slash fort. And your your sister's kind of in a swing looking the other way the whole time. She's like, she's too busy focused on her laptop. You just want her to look, but she's saying, hey, no, I'm, I'm busy. You want, you're going around the island getting everyone as much as you can, like, to help you in this thing. And you collect so many, like, just different varieties of things along the way. So many fun, fun little items that I can imagine just must have been a nightmare to code. Like, at one point you get, like, you know those, like, rubber sticky hand things? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You literally get one of those and you can latch it onto trees and it'll literally make you ragdoll. (laughs) <laughs> so you like you go up the tree a little bit, and then like if you let go, it'll just let go, and it's just like the stuff like that where I think of like there's a, there's even a ragdoll button like which I think would I would have loved in Zelda, but just just it's it's the most fun. It, it's like primal fun. Like it doesn't bother saying like here are the challenges. It's like this is just a game where you have fun. Yeah. There's, there's nothing wrong with just being a style of fun that is not super challenging. And I mean, it's kind of literally a playground. Yeah, exactly. It's a force where you set up little stuff for you and your friends. Yeah. It's and, a playground. You know, and, and there is like a minor story to it, so I, I can't fault it for anything other than just being super creative. And th- th- there's not too much else to say other than like you can... Um, they, they, they have somehow expanded their game to all of the island and uh, you can literally go around whacking like the cardboard silhouettes of enemies in quotation marks and uh you get uh kind of like paper mario origami king like style um confetti type shit oh okay like, paper and that helps you build things later for uh the the playground like uh like at one point you build like a castle, you build like a church kind of thing, okay. uh, like a, a market. It's it's all sorts of shit. And um, there's there's one part that, that fucking killed me, but I, I won't spoil it. It was it's just it's because it's centered around kids. It kind of is like oh, kids nowadays. What do what do they what do they do? What do they think or something like that? And it, it's just the most fun thing where it's like oh, he needs a nickel. Okay, well he's got a phone, so. He's like, well, here, I'll, I'll text my sister for a nickel. She's like, you want me to wire you a nickel? <laughs> <laughs> like, I need it for ice cream. <laughs> it can text it's just, me a nickel. And the, and it cut, the camera cuts are so perfect because it's cutting to, like, the, the ice cream guy, like, waiting, just being like, 
so it's got it's it's so fun i can't not recommend it i it I call it a kids game, but really it's just just pure fun. It's a game it's, about kids. Yeah. I I give it a fucking ten out of ten. It's um, it's too fun to not want to play again. I, I did just briefly Google the game and look at the art side. It does look very cute. Yeah, it's very cutesy. It's and like it's even cuter when you're like you're scrolling through the camera and like you notice his eyes aren't fully attached to his head. Oh no. They're like a little like they're like little like flat shapes. Yeah. They're like not fully there, and that's like for certain other characters too. Like some will have like a tail that's like slightly off. That's just like reminds me of like the slightly wonky like N64 GameCube era kind of it, 3D it's, stuff. It's kind of like if a kid made their own game. Yeah, and that's, that's kind of the feel to all of it. Probably what they were going for. Exactly. And uh, each each highest plateau you go, you get another stamina loop. Mm -hmm. So you continue to go, and even that has like a good punchline at the end of it. But I'm not going to spoil that either. Making so I. I Fully, I would pay sixty dollars for this fucking game. It's that fucking good. Cause I just, I've played it maybe like ten times. It's still really, really fun. Is it a short game? Oh, it's it's very short, but it's like, I still have fun with it. Making cardboard cutouts of enemies and then fighting them sounds like the most relatable <laughs> thing I've ever. Yes, heard I, used I used to do that shit. I used to do. I used to do cardboard cities, box forts. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I so did fun. like a cardboard guitar. I did. A, I did. I did. A, <laughs> I used one of my favorite things as a kid was taking cardboard boxes, putting paper on it, and drawing them as buildings, and then using toy cars around them and making them yes. little cities. Yeah. Oh my that god, was that awesome. was so fun. Oh man, I missed that. <laughs> I remember. Uh, I tried to make a guitar. And I had like twine, <laughs> and, like, and I like. Of course, I'm a kid, so I'm just thinking it'll make sound. <laughs> boing, 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 but yeah, it just doesn't make. Any, it was like and the cardboard was flimsy. And it's like, Should they use rubber bands? Yeah. <laughs> I even made like a cardboard like little box camera, which is funny because I have a lot of them now, like actual old school box cameras. But I can remember. Ones. I can remember so many times that my mom would say like, Ryan, did you use all the tape? Because oh. I'm taping yep. box parts yep. together Same and shit. Here. Yep. Same here. <laughs> oh yeah, tape was a gold commodity when yep. I was a kid. It was just like, it fixes anything. It does. So it's just, I, but again, I full, full stars for this game. It is such a, such a lovely little romp. And, and plus it's just like, it's even got like post game content where it's like, oh, once the story's over, you can just keep playing because there's still shit to do. The one I'm not going to say it's a flaw of the game, but I think it's weird. The, the title feels like a misnomer, because at what point do you even collect little gators? You are a little gator. Yeah, I've been, hold, I, I've been holding this joke in for 20 minutes. And I don't know why, it. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you could have thought of it. You could have used that time to think of a better joke. Well, yeah, okay. yeah. The reason I was hinting at was because I don't think... He's mentioned at any point that he, the the player character or the sister are gators, so like, this punchline will make sense. I guess, maybe. Uh, and, but then I remembered I'm not funny, and then I remembered... <laughs> well, then okay. I probably put a picture on the screen of the game, so... One day, Drew, it's just another part of the government side out to watch me take a shit. <laughs> what? But, but you no, bored so... someone one time! Yes, you do! <laughs> but, um, no, uh... <laughs> No, I. For Drew's sake, the brother and sister are gators. I no, I already knew that. I know you know that, but. So why is it for my sake? Just to get that out of the way. Dude, I knew that, and I have never heard of this game until now. But yeah, it's it's uh, very, and I think the best part too is that all of the characters have their own like little personalities and quirks that they just. That, like one guy just is obsessed with like mirrors or something. He's just like, oh, I love this mirror. It's perfect quality and and like kind of big words for like a kid's game where they're just like it's exquisite and and fascinating. And I'm just like, and it's it's clearly made for like I think it's made for the demographic of me. It, like the adults who kind of yeah, adults of a, reminiscing, yeah, reminiscing like a childhood. smaller game time, and it's like. I yeah. think when I bought it, it was like thirteen dollars. So I'm like, it's. I don't think it's that expensive or anything. So I, I, I strongly, strong recommend and love this game. All right, I, I guess it's my turn. So let's talk you? about get Pikmin. Big. What? I was gonna say, get big Engi, Drew. No, it's not time to get big Engi. Get big. <laughs> it's not. No, it's time to get small. Oh, it's true. Because I have Edie. I'm sorry. 
airy dairy, lots of fun with Pikmin what? 4. <laughs> Airy dairy. Yeah, yeah, listen, I, I'm so tired. Please help me get sleep. Sean, you are not awake. Wake up. Stop. Fellas, you have ED. Pikmin 4 will solve all your troubles. Yeah, baby. Yeah, nothing gets so, you going in the bedroom. Like Pikmin 4 makes everyone hard. <laughs> like a Nintendo game. Well, because difficulty modes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, let's... Yeah. So, Pikmin. Um... I think it's important to say that uh, I played Pikmin 3 Deluxe a couple years ago, and then I played Pikmin 4. I have not played 1 or 2. Um, Fake fan! Which okay. which they released yes. shortly after the, 4 on the Switch? Just before. Just I before, think. yeah, because there was like the so hype So now you the can game. get every yeah. Pikmin game on Switch. Um, but I think it's important to say that because th this is probably going to sound weird to people who haven't played any Pikmin game, mm -hmm. um, or only one, but... Every Pikmin game feels a little different. Um, Pikmin 1 really leans into its, um, like, 30-day time limit. Yep. Um, uh, Pikmin 2, essentially, you have the same overworlds, and you still have a daily time limit, but that game also has um, a system where you go into caves from the overworld, and once you're underground, the entire genre changes. The time limit of the day doesn't matter. You stay in this cave as long as you want. And it's basically a roguelike. Okay. It's randomized dungeons that will kick your shit in with dickish enemy placement. And if you weren't prepared, then you just aren't prepared. So. Um, but it's completely different from the more like regular difficulty overworld with a time limit. Um, and the game's just broken up into pieces like that. Um, Pikmin 3 gets rid of caves and kind of goes back into the pick a one time limit but um pikmin 3 started adding a lot of more um quality of life features to make the game less daunting because i think nintendo assumes that everyone's afraid of the time limit in pikmin and well that's right. just another thing on the well, well that's the thing too is that like i i i like the idea of pikmin but the time limit i i don't like being restricted I don't like being restricted by... Because I am one of those people that... For instance, Breath of the Wild. I do not want any sort of limitation upon me. And I'm like, if it's for a game to function and work in a certain way, like, oh, it has to respawn certain things, or it has to do this thing, sure, that's fine. Right. But but when it's a like a mechanic, like an intended mechanic, rather than just a concession of the medium of video games. Yeah, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's different. And... So for me, like that, that was always like a bit daunting, and that, that was kind of one of the reasons I never had too much interest in it. Right. See, I, I like video games with uh, limiting um, gimmicks because I'm kinky like that. So you know, are. I like more interesting stuff. Oh, a little. Kinky. <laughs> um, but th the thing is, the time limit's never been scary. Even in the first game, where it's like the big focus, it's never been intimidating. <laughs> it's more just there honestly to get you more engrossed in the shoes of the player character who's stuck on a planet and running out of their air supply mm -hmm. um but you know you can always just reset too i think even as far back as the first game you you can retry a day i think it's just pikmin 3 where they let you go even further back so like if you want to go back to the very first day or you want to go back three days ago rather than just one you can do that um let, let me let, let me word like this, and I'm not trying to be like standoffish <laughs> with it. There was a game I think called Home on uh, Xbox One or 360 that I played, and in that game you are on a spaceship, you get thrown off your spaceship, but the spaceship just kind of hovers there in this, in this atmosphere while you attempt to uh, climb tall structures and create new tall structures that will reach your spaceship and help you get up high back to your spaceship. Yeah. I I understand that there is always like a an immersion style, like, oh, we're running out of air type thing for that. I, I just function much better when I don't have that limitation because it not only gives me more chance to explore, but to what I do, which is create my own fun. Right. I wish there was another mode, if anything, that had, like, I don't know, maybe no day cycle. 
maybe you're just done when you're done and it, it's it's kind of weird I know um no that's not, I understand it that's that's a big thing about Pikmin you know like getting your resources getting back to that I, I think the thing that bothers me the most though is that you you just feel that restraint weighing on you and you just you're constantly like just trying to get it off your back and you're just like yeah it's just one of those things that just you know is just always going to be in the back of your head so that, that, that was something that especially when I played Pikmin 3 because they kind of take you through like a few levels at the demo yeah. um I didn't again I didn't buy that game but I I wanted to I wanted to try so I played the demo and it's I still felt that restraint where I was like yeah. I was wanting so badly to be like come on just let me go a little further I just want to see what's up ahead i want to know what's going on like even if they put like gates or something to be like oh well you have to wait till this day to interact with this right i could see that but it's they, they don't do that they just yeah kind of, like, it's just things are unlocked you. when you get there when you take care of the task to deal with it mm -hmm. um so i don't i don't know if you'd enjoy Pikmin four more or not because the thing that all four of these games consistently have in common is you have like a 15 minute day there is no grand day limit like, you can beat the game in 10 days, or you can beat it in 6 fucking thousand. Mm. It doesn't make a difference, but there's still always a daily time limit. With that said, this game also brings back caves, um, where you go in and time freezes. They say something early on, like, oh, well, time slows at 1 6 the pace underground, and it does something that I never noticed. <laughs> I never noticed. I could be in. I don't remember what no, I No, it's fine. You were, <laughs> no, what I remember was you were on Pikmin. Sorry, we had to pause. Oh, right, you were on uh, Pikmin I, Caves. Yes, Caves. caves. And you were on, you said 1 6 time limit. Which I never. No, I don't. Because I, it was like. You said, and I quote, they, and uh, the, they say in the overworld that it was on a 1 6 time limit. I never fucked with this. No, it's um that the passage of time supposedly slows, but. I, I don't know if that's actually a gameplay mechanic because again I never noticed. Yeah, neither did I. Like I could even in the demo that I played. I could yeah, same as Pikmin three. Wait, I played. It just oh, feels like uh, I, like it just stopped. Pikmin two. Yeah. Uh, Ethan, I know you said I, I said your name was Sean earlier. It was Ethan? Ethan, you have to wake up. You can't have the candy. <laughs> What are you buying? The bowl is the most guilty. Drew, can you be coherent for a fucking sec? I, you're, the PSYOP is over. You have to understand that I was already like using all six of my brain cells to stay coherent. <laughs> and then the podcast got interrupted. And when we hit play again, it's just, they all went down the toilet. Do you need more time, Drew? No, I guess it doesn't matter. I'll just jerk off and see what happens. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> well... Will just blew his load all over the fucking floor there. Oh, it's a lot of sugar. <laughs> what is your dad comprised with that you're covered in sugar? Okay, I guess it's fucking sack time. Here, I guess. You have shit. I <laughs> well, what else are we supposed to do with it? Talk about video games! While having candy! I'll just cut this out. <laughs> no, ASMR! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you get those fucking crinkles, bitch. I don't like stickers. I don't like you! I don't like you. <laughs> I don't like stickers. Good, we agree. <laughs> this is our new train wreck. Let's just go ball and sleep into the train wreck. Fine, fuck you. It's okay. I'll fuck your pussy later. I think bite-sized Snickers taste better because the peanuts take up more space. You know, there's like more peanuts per volume, right? So you get more of the nutty taste. Well, Drew, don't stop until you're proud. Don't stop what? Talking about Pikmin 4? No, nuts. Drew's a very big nut man. He loves a good nut. Why am I real? You're the one that brought over the fucking candy crack. What? You brought the nut. <laughs> I, they took it away, guys. I don't. Uh, maybe we. I. I don't. I will not. <laughs> I will not. The bathroom. Stand for this. The bathroom is right there. I don't need it. 
<laughs> I no, you didn't actually make that no. sound. No, you made that sound. We were recording and you. <laughs> my I can cut it out. You forget how editing works. Sean, wake up! <laughs> Stop saying Sean. Don't help me. I Who will punch you the next time you say Sean. that. Sean, why is that such an annoying joke? Because we don't know what the fuck you're talking about. You're talking to no one. It's not like a Skyrim thing where it's like, oh, you're finally awake. It's like, who the fuck is Sean? Big, rich, black chocolate in my fucking <laughs> big mouth. black dick? No, fuck you. <laughs> no, he was like, no, continue. You were talking about BBC. I was talking about thick black chocolate. I was talking about <laughs> dark ass in chocolate. In fucking food. <laughs> Tastes good, though. <laughs> This is like the intermission. Principal Farmer fast. <laughs> this entire show's ruined. And I did it! <laughs> Yay! Drew was, Drew was finally too tired to function. I've been too tired to function this whole time, but it's just, just the, the show getting interrupted was the tipping point. We went fucking shopping, and I, I looked to you, I'm like, Drew, are you okay? And he just has this thousand yard stare. And he's like, yeah, I'm good. Because I went to Wizzy Ring fucking self checkout, and all I wanted was a coffee. And I go there, and I do this thing, and it only takes cash. And I didn't have cash, and then I died. Mine took card. I asked if you waited. wanted me to buy it. I would have gotten it for you, you ding dong. But I didn't want to keep you guys waiting because I'm. I sick. buy you drinks every fucking day. At the Fire! What do you mean? God damn it, you weenie. Why do we go specifically to the Fire! Dream? Because that's where we work. I. They don't know which one. Can we cut that out, please? Sure, I'll, I'll censor it. Maybe it'd be a good idea to not say where we work, you absolute fucking idiot. Oh yeah, because they're gonna know this specific one out the multitude that they can- It's just on principle! We have 40 <laughs> subscribers! <laughs> you freak out way too much, sir. I know, I'm sorry, I just hate all of you, that's all. That's fine, it's just that you're the problem. <laughs> Pikmin 4 is fun, next game. <laughs> Fucking... No, you have to say more. What, what did you, did this... you... Was the story engaging? Pikmin does not ever have story. <laughs> it's always bare bones. Oh, I will yeah. say, the writing's always good, though. The, yeah. the, oh my god, you asked me a question, that's all you had to do. We figured it out! <laughs> <laughs> we did it! Don't this fall off the rails, come this, on. No, this isn't off the rails, this is in the fucking canyon. I know, but it's a it's a nice canyon. Let's take the a look around. The corner is searching through the rubble for victims. Give the fucking second, just let him talk. We're so back switch sisters. Um, Pikmin games always have a thinly veiled plot. It's you crash land on a planet. Oh no, what are we gonna do? But the characters' uh, writing is always very charming. And um, also, in case you didn't know, um, there is an enemy gallery um, where not only. Can you like throw items and stuff and Pikmin at the enemies and just watch them like walk around a little blank environment? Hmm. Um, but characters also write about them, as oh, in really? multiple characters. Like first, it's just like one of the crew members you start off with, and then you get Alomar, and then you get Louie. Oh, okay. It's, uh, it's really cool. That's neat. Uh, they hmm. do the same thing for treasures too. All the little items you collect, like whether it's a little GameCube game or like a like a puzzle piece, all all that kind of stuff. Um, hmm. And the, the writing's always very charming. The um, is this the first Pikmin game where you create your own character? Yes. Okay. Um, it's a, there's like two options. But does that <laughs> but, does that make it feel like any like no looser for the story for you? No. Okay. I mean, like Alomar and Louis and Alf, Brittany and Charlie, they all have like rather well defined characters. <clears throat> um, even if they're not all that deep, but like it doesn't. I never felt the difference. Okay. Um. There is an Alomar side mode you unlock later on that is um, essentially a hard 15-day limit. Um, I don't know if you're allowed to read Tri Days or not. I never did anyway, because I'm kinky like that. Um, I mean, that was pretty fun. You have less types of Pikmin, and um, the maps are redesigned such that there's more difficult enemies and stuff. Okay. Um, things oh. are intentionally tougher to beat under the, the time limit. Something I wanted to ask, because um, this game prided itself kind of on it was like oh going out at night yeah so that's the thing is um essentially what i was trying to say with caves is they're interesting they work like how they do in pikmin 2 time freezes the maps aren't randomized anymore but um <clears throat> you 
it still feels very different because the overworld is built in a very naturalistic kind of way. They're meant to look like real environments. But the underground is just like, here's a room of toys, or here's a cave, and it's brown and it's dark, <laughs> or here's a little pond, it's got water. But they don't look real. <laughs> it's it's blatantly reused assets, which is fine. That's how it's always been. Yeah. But that the the nice graphical style goes away, and the time limit goes away. Ryan's looking for drugs. It's fine. I must say, I saw you yeah. looking for a toothpick. Um, yeah, because you gotta get that nut. Um, or is that for sounding? Talking. Okay, just making sure that you were uh, going to sound your urethra with a toothpick. I forgot what. <laughs> See, that's why I can't let you fall off the rails. Get back on the horse. Get back um, on your goddamn. Horse. Oh no! I, no, I remember. Okay. Um, so I, I don't like that. You know, like playing through the caves are fun, but I, I like Pikmin more for the overworld environments they, they do, which is why I prefer Pikmin three, because Pikmin one and three. Those are all just overworld. It's yeah. Pikmin 2 and 4 that are divided in this weird way. Mm. And because there's no time limit in caves, they're built to be long. So you end up spending more time in caves, which yeah. don't... They don't have that natural beauty. They don't look interesting. Well, it's yeah, just of strict challenge. And the challenge part's fun, but I wish it were more naturally woven into the overworld. And the reason that I bring that up when you mention nighttime is when we all saw the trailer for, oh, you finally get to go out at night, it's like, oh, dude, finally. We get to... Because, you know, every game you hear that all the enemies get more dangerous at night. <clears throat> you never get to see it. You know? It's, it's just something you hear, like, once, and it's oh, never yeah. brought up again. And, it, you know, cool, but it'd be nice if we got to see that for ourselves. And we finally do! And we get to explore the overworld at night, and no, we don't. It's tower defense. Tower so, defense. I mean, you can walk around, you know, and the map is altered slightly, but um, you have the new glow Pikmin. They're like ghosts, and they have, um, like, hives, like termites or ants, mm -hmm. that you have to defend for enemies that come your way. So you spend a minute, like, gathering glow Pikmin and building up their numbers, and then after a minute or two, the enemies start coming in from various points on the map. So... You do get to walk around, but it's not for exploring. You take a few quick little breaks whenever you can to try and get more resources, but... What a weird way to market it, then. Yeah, it's... It really seemed like exploration at night. Right, which is what we all wanted. And the tower defense stuff is like... Some people it's like tower it, defense, some people yeah. don't. It's, to it's tower defense. It's, it's, like it's the stressful. And they, they, they lean into the stressful aspect. The music swells when enemies are destroying the base. Um, there are music stings when your Pikmin get eaten. It works, but it's not what I want to see. Mm -hmm. um, it's not what Pikmin is about. Right. Um, so essentially how I feel about the game is every single part of it is fun, but it feels so segmented, and I wish it all felt like a more cohesive experience. Mm. You have the Dandori battles, you have the the cave system with the kind of mix between like Dandori and just like going through hard obstacles. Yeah. And then you have the tower defense stuff. I'm like, these are all really fun. And I wish it didn't all feel so separated. Yeah, they're all very segregated apart from each other. Because when my favorite part is going through the the beautiful kind of natural overworld, these like old human gardens or like this little pond and stream and I feel like this is the prettiest most immersive part of the game it's the most interesting it's the most quirky it feels like it's Pikmin's identity as you're going around these little places and nooks and crannies and you're just a little guy and all that gets thrown out the window when the game wants to do anything else so it's fun I had a lot of fun with Pikmin 4 honestly I thought it was addicting it's just in kind of more so in hindsight yeah, I, I didn't, instead of playing the game, yeah. I didn't think this so much when I was playing the game, but once I was done for a couple days, I just went back to, like, binging a show or, like, playing Mario Kart. I'm like, you know, now that I think about it, I, I wish it had been a little different. But There's a lot of things like that with, with certain games, but I'm glad you enjoyed it, because... Um, yeah, I still ultimately recommend it, um, and I think it's a good start for Pikmin. Uh, because, like, like Pikmin 3, there's a lot of quality of life issues, but even more so in this game. Um, also, 
the the one last thing I want to bring up is, <clears throat> um, I'm wondering, okay, what's the new gimmick gonna be? Because with Pikmin 2, it was you get to play as two captains and you have underground systems. The gimmick with the third game is here's three captains and you have the Wii U gamepad. And one of the first things we learned about with Pikmin 4 was you have a dog companion. And I'm like, okay, yeah. uh, sure, <laughs> I guess. Question mark. Question mark. Um, Ochi's the best part of the game. <laughs> He's good. And I don't care that he doesn't have a nose. He's cute anyway. I don't care about all these people saying he looks creepy without a nose. He's perfect. Um, but it's cool because whereas Pikmin 2 and 3, you have other captains that don't have different abilities than the standard one. Ochi is kind of like a weird mix between a bunch of Pikmin and a captain. There are some things that you and Ochi can do. There are some things that Ochi can do like a group of Pikmin. Like, he can lift something that typically only 10 Pikmin can lift. Mm -hmm. Or there are things that only Ochi can do. And you, and can, you can upgrade him too, I think. Yeah, you can upgrade yourself and Ochi to be stronger or resist certain elemental hazards. Um, but Ochi was just, I don't know, he was a good boy. Yeah, I, I kind of got that feeling from seeing him that like he was going to be a big... Uh, yeah, like you, you have Ochi game. all the time. It's not just like a mode of the game, but I think the game's identity is stronger for it because otherwise, again, everything's fun, but it feels kind of weirdly segmented and you know organized. Nothing feels super cohesive, but um, the fact that you play with Ochi all the time makes Pikmin 4 feel like a more distinct Pikmin experience rather than like. Pikmin Superstar, where it's just like, oh, you do this now, and you do this later, and you do this after that. One of the things I do remember was um, just the satisfaction of being able to just, like, hop on Ochi and just, like, go across a river, because you can't normally, like, you can go on the river, but your other Pikmin will die. Yeah, unless they're blue, because yeah. blues are the only ones that swim. Yeah. Um, or Ice Pikmin. Oh, yeah, Ice Pikmin are great. Um, you can throw them into a pond to freeze the body of water so that everyone else can walk on it. Mm -hmm. And that's just cool. That's also, mean. they're rock Pikmin, but they're cold. Mm -hmm. I don't know why we have rock and ice Pikmin, but I like them. Yeah, they're great. I mean, they're always great. Okay, that's everything I have to say about... Uh... Pikmin? Pikmin 4! <laughs> you did not just forget the game. Uh, but you said you see, when Drew derails, he doesn't just derail. He goes down the viaduct. He was trying to think of a joke, I think. Into though. the trench. I, I, flaming wreckage. Hey, so, you know, small next, boy McGee. Ne next game. So. We're not talking about Gerald McBoing Boing. We're talking about... Uh, tell me about a cool game that I'll like. I'll I'll do this one first. You might not fully like this one. I'll like it. Uh, WWE 2K23. Okay, well. <laughs> <laughs> well, so much for that. Fair enough. I So, this is going to come with a little bit of a story. I, I played WWE games for years, but as I played them, they just kind of sank in quality. That's what I've heard, too. And, um... The company behind them is... 2K. 2K, that's 2K, right. 2K, um... <clears throat> Formerly, when they, they, they were under a... A lot of people claim like the earlier games are kind of the best ones. There was SmackDown, Here Comes the Pain, and a few others. Um, then uh, THQ and Uke's company kind of took over and made the SmackDown vs. Raw series from 2006 all the way up until 2011 when 2K, they switched developers to 2K. Um, THQ was kind of still the major developers in those games, and they were like really fun arcade type games. They were never like, like a lot of these other wrestling games now that 2K have made, it focused on like the realism aspect of it. Yeah. But it's like, you, you can't capture that realism with, with wrestlers. It's like, with, with wrestlers on a TV screen, it's like, um, or on a, in a video game, because like, the emotions, the, uh, the, the facial expressions, it's, it's all part of the things you watch and understand about wrestling. So yeah. one of the things that confused me was how I was supposed to react to those games. But like in the old games, they were just fun arcade beat em up type shit where it's just like you just, you head in, you know your basic shit you gotta do and you do it. And um, 
they also had like incredible soundtracks. Uh, there was, uh, I think one of them even had a fucking, I can't say anything of the name. Boy George? No, it's the Evanescence. Oh, okay. The, so they they had like rock type music like that, and that was they, were, they were really, really good. And um, I, I maintain that 2K14 is still my favorite wrestling game of all time because it's a mixture of both arcadey and really good graphics. Uh, WWE 2K23 is really fucking close. Uh, it's kind of, it's because what happened was I don't know if you guys know this. Not only did they sink in quality, they fucking tanked. Yeah, uh, I've heard. 2K20 yeah. was the worst. Yeah, that's why I heard. It um, it had terrible, terrible glitches, and it was just a god awful mess. I didn't, I didn't buy it. I, I never fucking bothered. I didn't even bother buying 19. Um, I stopped at like 18, I think, and um, it was just so terrible. And so what happened was the backlash was so bad. They stopped making games for a whole year because usually they release one every year. Yeah. And so what they did was they changed the development time. They they took two years to make a game. Really good idea. They continued, and they really fixed the engine, and came back with 2K22. Decent game, not great. Then 23 came out, and it's just a better version of that. Yeah. And so, this... This version has a lot of shit that I would have wanted in older games, where it's like, you can make your own custom entrances, like, like you can always do that, but what I'm saying is like, you can like, put the colors you want up there for your entrance, you can do certain things and not have to worry about, uh, like, put certain movies up there while other things are happening. Part of the wrestling experience, and, um, community creations are even better than they've, than they've been, um, just, just more options, more, more everything going on, and um, it, it's kind of hard to describe when you're not a wrestling fan. But like, just, just more, just, just more in the tank. And uh, one of the biggest things for me is the showcase mode, which showcase um, they usually focus on a wrestler's like highlights of their career. This one uh, was very different in the sense that we all have heard the name John Cena. <laughs> yeah. Oh, of course. Uh, I've never seen him though. True, he's elusive. But <laughs> this game was about the few who have beat him, and it was about playing as all these different guys who have beat him in these matches over the years, and like in big circumstances where titles were on the line or like pride was on the line and stuff. So it's all these situations where, and and uh, the whole th- through the whole game because it's obviously marketed by WWE, John Cena's giving voiceover saying like, hey, these guys were tough opponents and he had a, he had this going for him, but I had something too. And he, he kind of like tells the narration of the story before you get into the match. Yeah. So it's it's interesting in that sense. And then there's also, um, there's also just like other mo- there There's a great mode, and this isn't really spoilers or anything now, but like they play up the joke. Uh, there's a character called Super Cena, and he's invisible. <laughs> <laughs> he's got the wristbands, the hat, the jorts, the shoes, but you can't see. Him. That's amazing. Now, is he a clone, or is he John Cena from the Super Future? No idea. Oh, nice. But there's there's even actually there's a trick mode too because um, you think you're like okay, choose your best or choose his best opponent and fight him in this. You go in, he just one one moves you and pins you one two three, and you're like, I didn't have a chance. Nice. What happened? And he does that to remind you, like, there's always someone out there that can just topple you at any moment. And it's like, all right, but now like you're facing your ultimate challenge, and then it's the invisible John Cena. But um, it, it was just it, it, there's just a lot more fun shit going on, and plus uh, one of the biggest parts of those games is the community creations because people make wild wild shit. They make Iron Man, they make fucking Shrek, they... And, like, just putting that all out there, and they, like, design custom moves for them and everything, and it's just... Just all this shit just... pummeled into one game, and... It's... Other than the fact that 2K prices their games ridiculously, which they make... They make so many editions, like, they made three different editions, and it's like... In one year, this shit's gonna be free. 
<laughs> yeah. Because yeah. it's going to be outdated. Yeah. So it's, it's it's tough on that regard, but I bought this game for like 20 bucks, and I was like, I'm... It's oh, yeah, good. you you more than get your money's worth in that regard, though. Yeah. So, uh, and uh, even when I was going through tough financial troubles, I had to sell it. I got it back for like 10 bucks. <laughs> so, oh, sick. You got it back cheaper. Exactly. It's like you a made few profit. months later, it was cheaper. You made profit. Yeah, basically. And like... And it was just a very interesting uh, WWE game. So, like, long story short, I recommend it. It's not the best it could be, but it's it's definitely better than it has been in years for WWE games. Because after that tank, there was uh, there was a lot to be desired. Yeah. That was it. I had. That was all I had to say about uh, WWE. If you have got, got one, Kurt. Okay, it's time to be. I'm not angry anymore. I'm not mad, I'm just disappointed. Whoa. Sonic Superstars. Uh, I, I'm actually really curious about this one because I want to know exactly what it is. So... Because I, 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 <laughs> all I know is there's a new character, really. That's really all I know. Oh, I love... I love uh, oh my god, I almost called her Sticks. <laughs> um, looks a lot like her. We've Fucking crossed the river. Tricks. Trip. Trip. Oh. The, the Sun Gazer, yes. Um, she's cute. So the game's automatically a 10 out of 10. Um, Some people would justify that. So let's let's do this little spiel one more time because the world has never heard it enough. There's always one more person that's never heard the story. <laughs> um, so Sonic Mania was a game made by people that Sega hired from the fan community and they knocked it out of the fucking park. The game banked a little too much on nostalgia because they were asked to make most of the levels remixes of older ones rather than completely new material, but whether it was the original stages or the old ones, the game just had a lot of polish, um, beautiful pixel graphics. Well, especially when you bring in fans of the community who, like, right. um, they want quality. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, the, the game was, wasn't too... I mean, no more buggy than any other Sonic game. Very well put together. Um, great soundtrack, great remixes, beautiful graphics. I remember um, a lot of people love the soundtrack of Eagle Upon Race. Yeah, a couple cool new mechanics where, you know, like, it doesn't feel any more different than, like, Sonic 3 did to Sonic 2, but, like, just a couple little things. You know, one more new item, one more move that Sonic can do. Um, you had some extra characters later on. Just good stuff all around. There's a reason that Mania's praise it's because, like, yeah, it's, it feels like the peak of quality for Sonic. Sonic is usually, you know, even if it's not like a horrible game, it's kind of like middling or decent quality, but Mania felt like uh, this team was really given time to make this a complete product. Sonic Superstars, I don't think, has gotten that, um, that treatment. Essentially, um... A lot of people think the writing was on the wall when it was announced that this game was not going to be made by the Mania devs because they're busy making the 2024 Game of the Year, Penny's Big Breakaway. Why doesn't that game have a release date yet? I'm so fucking excited. That um, does look like a game. It's a 3D platformer where you're a girl with a living yo-yo. I need it in my mouth right now. My knee hurts from hitting it so hard. Um, well, it's either that or my dick. Just go like this. Just... No, I'm kinkier than that. Um, Sonic Superstars was developed by uh, Arzest. Um, and I think the reason they got Arzest is because the head of Arzest is Naoto Oshima, who's one of the original people that worked on Sonic. Here's the thing with that. Yuji Naka was the programmer. That's who people, I think, care about most, because that's what matters most in Sonic is like how the game feels, the physics and stuff, the level design. Naoto Shima was like, he did the art, he did the character designs ah. and such. Still an important part of Sonic, but like, a, a development company headed by him doesn't necessarily mean anything for the game's quality. Yeah. What does mean something for the game's quality is Arzest, they are commissioned to work on games for cheap. Like, Nintendo's commissioned them to do, like, Yoshi's New Island and Hey Pikmin. Those are not, like, huge AAA games. I'm not calling those games garbage. I haven't played. I don't know. Those they're games, clearly drops in budget. They're yes. clearly not 
listen, AAA games. People like Scott the Waz and whatever, they can tear into the games because, oh, why did we get this in 2015? And I've done it too. We all do it. It's fine. But like, those games are not train wrecks. They're just kind of like disappointing. They're not exciting. Yeah. That's how I feel about Sonic Superstars. Because yeah, wow, when you give a, a random fucking literal Who development team like 13 months to work on a new game and they're not given that much of a budget to begin with, yeah, you're not getting the fucking Breath of the Wild over yeah. here. Um, but I, I think the game graphically, like other RSS games, does not look that great. I don't know if there's a consensus on that part, but I figured I'd get that out of the way because it's not as important. The game doesn't look horrible. I have seen uh, like PS4 versus PS5 footage and differences, and I'm like. Here's it, the thing, it looks like, barely different, and it just doesn't look that great. I played on the Switch, and I know that things are compromised for the Switch because, yeah. you know, it's a fucking toaster. But I don't think there's a lot graphically different. Um, no, it's just like some at least sensor re- take Yeah, out. at least in regards to like the, the actual quality, besides being, you know, downscaled a bit. Um, I think the game looks like an up 3DS game, and I don't say that as an insult. I mean it as in I think that's what it literally looks like. It looks like if I took Sonic Generations 3DS and I just put it on my widescreen. Or, like, it looks like an old, like, kind of middling or low-budget Xbox Live Arcade game from, like, the 360 days. Like, it's just kind of... You know, the graphics aren't that important, and I can get over it. And the game still has a nice art style. You know, it's colorful. You know, the character designs are nice. You know, the environments kind of pop. But it was, like, one little thing I noticed in the beginning of the game and I was like, okay, but it's still good. It, th- that's what this game is. Fuck. It's the scene in The Simpsons where Homer and Bart are chasing after a pig that has been launched into the air. And they're trying to get back because it's for their, like, barbecue, right? Yeah. And now their barbecue's ruined. They're, like, going through Springfield. They're just running. And the pig's still flying. And it's like, oh, it got a little wet through the dam. It's still good. It's still good. Oh, it went through the mud. It's still good. It's still good. Oh, it's just a little airborne. It's so good. Dad, it's gone. I know. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I felt with Superstars, because I noticed, like, I was already trepidatious um, from from the from the moment I started the game. And it was just a lot of little stuff that made me go from, like, oh, I'm having fun, to, like, oh, it's okay, to, uh When well, you're stretching your... You're stretching what you're willing to compromise. Yeah, and ultimately I hit a breaking point before I even finished the game. Like, I got to the final boss, and it was just not doing it for me, and I'm like, okay, I don't even need to beat this. Yeah, I've had, I've had certain games where, like, no matter how much I I try and compromise certain things, I'm just like, I can't do it. And it's weird, too, because, like, the, the first level, uh, Bridge Island, I think is one of the prettiest levels in the game. And the music sounds really good. Just kind of nice, good music. I don't know. It sounds like something from like Mania or Sonic Adventure. It's great. Um, the level designs good. You know, everything's normal. Everything plays right. Um, I'm like, okay, all right, we're off to a good start. And then you get to the mini boss of Act One, and that trademark like Sonic Four synth comes in. It, it's like trying to emulate Genesis sound, but it's not Genesis emu- uh, <laughs> instruments. It's just like weird shitty sounding synth it sounds like screeching cats it's like okay but like the stage music wasn't like this the special stage music wasn't like this the pirate music isn't like this why does it sound like Sonic 4 now and then you clear the level it plays a level clear jingle and it's back to regular music it was, okay and then you beat level 2 it's like okay cool and then you get to level 2 boss and it's more Sonic 4 weird music it's like oh okay my ears hurt again mm. okay and now you get yeah, to the second I... zone, back to regular music, and the game fucking pinballs. So weird. But also, most of the, at least from what I remember, most of the music that has regular uh, good instrumentation is in, like, the first half of the game. Most of it is. Yeah. But it's still, like, the Sonic 4 weird music comes up often enough also for every boss, but also occasional levels. I remember way back, sorry to cut you off, but like, I remember way, 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 way back in the Discord chat, you, you made, I think this was before Will joined. Yes. You made, like, a comment that was, like, 
I'm like halfway through this game, or like, like I'm like almost done with this game, and the fucking music is hurting. Yeah. And like I remember being like, "Jeez, is that bad?" Because usually Sonic's pretty good on the music. Like the the compositions themselves are good. Like the melody is good. It's just why didn't they take the time to add proper instrumentation? Yeah. Um, cause like the game has 3D graphics anyway, like we're not doing the retro pixel art style anymore. So like, why are we even trying to emulate the sound of older hardware when we could just do instruments? Like half the soundtrack, like every song melody wise, I think is pretty good to outstanding. Like there are some that have been stuck in my head since I played the game, <laughs> but the instrumentation it just... It, it makes me never want to listen to those songs. Yeah. Um, the other thing, too, is... Um, the reason I like classic Sonic bosses is you can... If you know what you're doing, you can cheese through them very quickly. If you don't know what they're doing, they take a few minutes. They're yeah. kind of tough. You, you'll probably get hit a few times. That's great. I like that. I like that on a repeat playthrough. I can just... <laughs> eight fucking times, and then I'm done. You can't really do it like that in this game... Because the bosses want you to use the new Chaos Emerald powers for the first time. I'm surprised it's the first time they've ever done this in a Sonic game. Mm. Chaos Emeralds have different powers. Um, so for each special stage you complete and get a Chaos Emerald, you can do a new thing. Like, you can unleash clones of yourself towards the boss. You can slow down time. You can uh, move through water more quickly. They want you to use most of these Chaos Emerald powers to speed up the bosses rather than the hit point you're trying to aim for being too out of reach while the boss mm -hmm. takes like 45 seconds to do all this stuff that's not even that difficult or engaging. It's a carnival ride that they're making you finish rather than right. you being skilled. But I didn't find the special stages that fun. I've never really liked that special stages are always a different style of gameplay than just more levels. Yeah. Because I feel like I'm not being challenged on what I already know. I'm like, oh, okay, weird 3D controls in a 2D game. Uh, what's this one do? And it's like, ugh. The, but the thing is, the cast emeralds aren't required to be, well, I mean, they unlock, like, a final story for a shitty final boss, where Super Sonic has awkward controls. Another news, the sky is blue. But, otherwise, they're not required to beat the game, so now I feel like, I don't want to do special stages. But I need more Chaos Emeralds if I don't want the bosses to scrape dick on the concrete for five minutes rather than just like a minute or 30 seconds. The bosses, they're like Mario bosses. Like, they're just there as a formality. Yeah. yeah. No one plays Sonic they're for the bosses. They're more of a set piece than an actual Right, so just obstacle. let me do it quickly. And again, you can if you get more emeralds, but it's like, I don't it's just boring. want to. Yeah, you, you, don't, you don't get engaged yeah, by it. Yeah, because the special stages are boring. Um, it was just a lot of little stuff like that that... You know, I, I started having a good time, and my mood just soured over the course of the game. And, you know, I know a lot of people can get over it. I just, I can't. But, like, the music in particular, that not only was it sometimes great and sometimes bad, but I never knew when the next bad song was going to come up. Yeah, it, like, it, it fucked with my head. Yeah. It's like, I'm just, I'm trying to have a good time, but all the signs kind of boring, but, like, you know, it's okay, and it controls my, ah, my ears. Yeah. I, I got rid of that fucking game immediately. I took a vacation for two games, because this game came out three days before Mario Wonder. I'm like, okay, cool. Two kind of old school, you know, platformers. That's, like, just for me. It's Drew Week. Uh, it wasn't Drew Week until Friday. <laughs> I had to wait for Mario Wonder, uh, which I will get to later. Um, but the, well, how many more do you have left? That's my last one. Mario but Wonder. there's one more thing I want to bring up about Superstars is if regular classic Sonic gameplay doesn't appeal to you, the only other thing that Superstars um, quote unquote brings to the table is its um, like co-op multiplayer. Mm. But here's the thing. The level design is not any different than other classic Sonic games. So I want you to imagine four-player fucking New Super Mario Brothers style gameplay. Jeez. In a classic Sonic game. That's exactly what it is. They made no concessions. The camera doesn't ever zoom out. 
It only follows the person in the lead. Uh, Half the time you're gonna be dragged out. It's like I hate when they do. That. When did they think this was a good idea? I I, I don't understand. And there's like other multiplayer modes too, where it's not that you're like fighting each other in an arena. Um, but the graphics are horrible because I think they had like two months to cook that mode. Um, and it's not that fun anyway. It's very, very basic. So like, if you want superstars, it's a, for, like for the multiplayer game. Like if you plan on playing that with like your friend or your brother, um, you're just fucked. Uh, by the way, this was sixty dollars. So. Nope. No, thank you. No, no, sixty dollars. That's okay. okay. I think you were trying to signal something else to me, and I did not understand. You like, popped out your collar. Thank you. For sixty dollars. Thank you, Daddy Sega, for sixty dollars. Thank you. But Trip is cute. Put her on screen. Without the without the helmet, so you can see like her face. I'll make sure to have the helmet version there first, and then when you say without the helmet, she'll be without it. She's perfect! Doesn't she also turn into, like, a dragon? Yes, her super form, it doesn't look like just a, a character, but golden and spiky. No, she turns into an actual fucking dragon. <laughs> and uh, you can, like, freely fly around the levels, which doesn't... Doesn't mesh with the level design. Yeah, I was about to say, how does that function? Because like, half the time you're just skipping over everything, and the other half of the time you're just like trying to go through tight nooks and crannies, and like sometimes you turn to a ball and go through the main section, and sometimes you don't. But it's okay because I would pay sixty dollars to hold hands with Trip because she's my friend. Sam, isn't that just the? That's all. That's all that matters in Sonic. It's just the characters. Yeah, really. They're not attached to games of middling quality every five fucking years. No, it's just they're cute little characters. People still claim over fucking Marine. No. Shit. I know people. Oh, see, but I wonder if they played Marine's game because her character is uh, she's annoying. Well, I know and a lot of people pulls who that love. Off very well. I know a lot of people love Sonic Rush. Um, Rush is okay. Um. What's your next game? Because I'm tired of being depressed. <laughs> my, <laughs> my final game. <sighs> so my final game is We Love Katamari, Reroll plus Royal Reverie. I'm wondering if you should just do your Mario Wonder first. Do you, do you want to end on Katamari? We can do that. Hmm. Either way. <laughs> Yeah, if that's okay. Oh no, it's not okay. That's why I asked you if you, know, if you want to do it. You're not allowed! No TV for one hour! Ha! Uh, yes! Freaky father! I know, I did like the announcer voice, and it just trickled really quickly into the, the uh, old 1950s father voice. Yes. Come on, Yard, let's play Catch in the Sun! Son, were you smoking? Good boy! <laughs> 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 Don't forget to beat your wife later. <laughs> Don't forget your sister. She's missing some bruises. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Super Mario Wonder. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, it's a multiplayer game that works. <laughs> oh, she's already phenomenal. I can't believe we figured that out in current year minus one. We did it, lads. <laughs> we figured out minus. how to make a, a multiplayer platformer. Man. Imagine playing a multiplayer platformer and it working. I, 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 was it literally 10 years ago to the day? Or not to the day, but like to the year that um, Super Mario World came out? Wasn't that 2013? What? I'm, I'm referencing Super Mario World. Super Mario 3D World. Okay. Oh, oh. No, I'm sorry. Oh. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I can Super see how Mario you... World for the 3DS. No, sorry. My, my head. <laughs> I was thinking other things. Okay. Um, I don't. I think it was 2013. Actually. Yes, it was. It was 2013. I so didn't it realize. took 10 years to get a finally functional. Uh, I mean, you had um team playing. Wii before that. I guess that's fair. Man, Super Mario World came out. On the 3DS? Holy crap. Yes, it did. It was on Virtual Console on wow. 3DS. Wow. Um, but only on the new Nintendo 3DS could you get SNES games. Uh, so, 
I of all the games that you missed out because of the economic crisis of Ot 23, um, I I think you'll like Wonder the most. Really? Unless you're looking forward to like WarioWare Move It that much, which uh, I, I definitely need to get around to playing. But hmm. um, it, again, like you're you're kind of on and off with 2D games, but if if you like Mario platforming and you like Mario's kind of you know, wacky imaginative world and like the cool enemy designs and stuff. Wonder is like it's my favorite Mario game now. Really? Yes. Oh okay. wow. Um, Dang. Now you know, like I I know the like I'm the guy that I don't like Odyssey. I don't like Sunshine. I don't like. 64, well, no, but I but, I do value your opinions when it comes to 2D games because you know what a good 2D game is, especially right. from that. I I think just in general Mario 2D platforming kind of just is disinteresting to me. It's always course clear, and nothing wrong with course clear. I just I value uh, puzzle and adventure like Hollow Knight or like Shantae or some shit yeah. much more than that. Yeah, so more adventure style. Yeah, that's just kind of my thing. But um, I, I definitely see that there are there is a market for that type of stuff, and there's definitely a lot of appeal towards it. So I don't know. Maybe one day I'll I'll give it a shot. But other than that, I don't. I'm not too invested. But it. I'll, at the very least, I'll give it its creativity points. It certainly is a yeah. creative aspect. Um, it's just the reason why I I think you'd enjoy it um, more than you think is because, um, for one, I mean, look, again, it's like the Sonic talk. We're like, Mania good, Superstar is not good. Everyone's heard this, but, you know, the last four 2D platformer Mario games have been all the same graphical style, same kind of yeah. like musical identity, um, you know, a lot of power-ups that just blend together, a lot of the level design blends together. It's all been new soup. Mm-hmm. It was like that for uh, from 2006 to 2012. Two of those games came out in the same year, and then for 2D Mario, besides like Mario Maker, which is mostly old stuff yeah. that you're remixing, it's no, nothing else has come out. It's all been 3D or Mario Maker and no original 2D stuff. People were wondering if 2D Mario was dead for a while. I'm like, I think that's kind of a dumb idea. Like, no, it's going to come well, back at idea, some point. The idea but, was that, like, where do you go from there? Yeah, Cause, for sure. Because what they had done for the years following that was recycle the same stuff. Right, so it was a question aspect. of are they going to recycle more again? But no, um, I think this game has like the creativity of odyssey packed into a a course clear 2d mario game hmm. because even like the non-new suit mario games like they blend together right like you have one in lost levels which is uh bricks and pipes and then you have mario 2 which is fun but doesn't play like a mario game and then you have three in world which other mario games have been referencing for 30 fucking years mm-hmm. so you know that all feels samey even if world and three are more fun like, it's been there, done that, just naturally over the course of time. Mario Wonder is that Odyssey style, that 3D Mario style, breath of fresh air. Like, almost all of the enemies in the in the whole game are new. You get older ones, too. You know, you get boots, well, course, you get yeah. bullet bills. Um, but a lot of them are new, and they they behave so distinctly from older enemies. Like, they, they utilize entirely new mechanics. They move in patterns and some of them are in groups uh, the like we've never seen in any other game so it really feels like the, they wanted this game to have its own unique identity and the enemies are just one way to do that because the other thing obviously it's the wonder effects you get like this magical seed and then um, something crazy happens in the level there are one or two that get reused later on um, and usually they still put a twist on it so it feels new or like it's a lot more difficult. Yeah. But generally, for the mo- 99% of the time, every single level in the game has a different wonder effect. Hmm. And look, not all of them are going to knock your socks off. You know, some are like, oh, we've turned the lights off. It's yeah. like DKC style. You just see silhouettes. But it's still a, 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 a change in the pace of the level such that uh, as soon as I finished the game, I was like, I wouldn't mind replaying this, because even if I know what the twist of each level is halfway through, it's you're playing a regular Mario level, 
and then the pace changes to something dramatically different. So, you know, even if you see it coming, it's... The game never it's feels stale. It's a palate cleanser to kind of yeah. keep you I couldn't, engaged. I couldn't put the game down, man, because it's constantly throwing stuff at you. You know, the levels are only, only so many minutes long. Halfway through, something changes. And it's like that every time. So it's like, what's next? I want to know what's next. What's over here? What's going to happen this time? It is fascinating. Um, and the, mm. it's, it's that typical kind of Mario style level design where like they introduce um, an enemy or a mechanic or a power up to you. Of course, and then and they then ramp it up. You, you ramp it up. Same thing with the Wonder Seeds. The Wonder Seeds test you on what's already been through the level, but they put a twist on it. Sometimes it's the hardest version of that challenge, or sometimes it's um, putting the challenge on its head so that you have to rethink about how you're going to take on these new obstacles. You know, sometimes there's a time limit. Sometimes there's bottomless pits. Sometimes your movement is restricted because you've transformed into something. Yeah. Um, but the game just has very, very fucking good pacing. Um, the music, I, I don't like the main theme, and I don't know if that's a hot take, but I don't like the the acapella voices. I don't like the acapella guys. The do 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 do. It's very yeah, yeah they're very sing song. Kind of off putting, but I. I like I, the I, athletic version of the main theme that doesn't have four barbershop men singing. I, I will say, uh, you do that for like a grand scale moment. Um, like what voices? Yeah, like like voices like to to ramp something up like where you, like like you know when there's like a big moment in a movie and you have like the. Uh, yeah, like a choir. Yeah, like where something comes in and like you can do the barbershop quartet style, but like yeah, but... With, with that um, <laughs> I, I had an example I was thinking of, but it's like when um, oh, Mario Sunshine. Yeah. In the special stages, you'll hear like do 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 do. Yeah. And it's just like it's just like quick, rep- repetitious, but not like. It's not in your face. It's like kind of just like background. Yeah, it's, and it, it also helps that it's a cover of an older song. Exactly. So and it's it like feels so, more quirky. Yeah, and um, it just kind of adds more tone to the level where you're just like, oh, okay, this is just slowly. For all you know, it could be like, oh, this is just mem- Mario memories. I don't know. Yeah. Who knows? Um, but it's just fun. The, um, <clears throat> the, I guess the larger point I was making was just overall, I like the music, just not the main theme. But again, like the athletic remix of the song that doesn't have four men standing over my shoulder, really good. The rest <laughs> of the soundtrack's very good, too. It, it doesn't sound different from any other Mario game, just like typical, nice kind of cartoony vibes, so very good. Yeah, they usually succeed at that pretty well. Um, it's kind of crazy that uh, Peach and Daisy and Toadette are in this game, and they're playable, because for years we just had Mario, Luigi, Toad, and other Toad. You know, we had like 3D World where like Peach was playable, and then just, we haven't seen her since. Mm-hmm. Um, none of the characters have different abilities, and I was disappointed by that at first. I liked the Mario 2 or 3D World style system where like they have different stats and abilities, but I get why they didn't do it here because this game has a badge system where wearing a badge gives you a new ability. So having 30 of those, even if they're not all crazy, they change things up a lot. Having that stack on top of every character being different, I that'd be a little too much, uh, especially for like a family-friendly co-op game. Yeah. So I I understand why they didn't go down that route. It's just nice to play as Daisy. <laughs> it's it's refreshing. My wife. I, I I played the entire game as Daisy, and then like halfway through, I'm like, oh yeah, I should like I should just like look at like the new animations because everyone looks so lively, and I. I Put on Mario for one second, and I'm like, "Yeah, this doesn't feel right. This is Daisy's game. <laughs> <laughs> it's her time to shine." I was say it's her time. Well, like, that's another thing that uh, my my problem with the 2D Mario platformers is they're always so repetitious, and like they're they always have like the same movements you've seen a million times over. Where it's like, yeah, Yahoo! Where it's like we can all do the arm up, half arm down pose. Where it's just like, yeah. Oh, you mean like their animations? Yeah. Yeah, like they're always like. Even if they're new animations, they're still, like, the images we're all used to. Yeah. And it's just like, I don't know, i not not too keen on it. <laughs> like, the, the characters are so expressive, though. I didn't realize how emotionless Mario is in the new suit games until you, you look at, like, 
comparisons of the gameplay between then and now, like his face like never changes. Oh, of course. It's so weird. But like when Mario crouches down, he goes, <laughs> and when he goes through a pipe, he's like, <laughs> even when when Bowser is in Galton Lava, he's just staring. Yeah, it's very. Bowser's seen some shit. It's yeah. very weird. It's just like Mario just stares at my fucking dead corpse, and I just like I'm worried about my son, and he's just staring at me. <laughs> like, shh. um, I what was I? Oh, right. Um, the thing though with them including more characters, like they even brought back the two different toes from New Soup. If you're nostalgic for them, like they have the blue and the yellow. That's mm-hmm. great. Um, you have all those characters here, and then Yoshi and Nabbit are easy mode. And Nabbit, I understand, because in um, New Soup U, when he was introduced, he was easy mode. Like, essentially, you're not affected by power-ups, but unless you fall into a pit or, like, lava, you're invincible. So, like, Nabbit, I kind of understand, but then Yoshi, right? Like, we bring in all these fan-favorite characters, Peach, Daisy, Toadette, and there's no handicap with them. They play like anyone else. But if you want to play as Yoshi, you're fucked. There's four different, five? I think five different colored Yoshis, and they're all easy mode. Mm-hmm. And I don't, I don't get it. It's like they're finally taking this time to capitalize on the fact that Mario has more characters than Mario and Luigi, and they hit it out of the park until they don't with Yoshi. It's like, you know, two steps forward, one step back, Yeah. I guess. Um, I mean. I mean, you can ride Yoshi. Like, if you're playing as Yoshi and, like, I jump on your back, you know, I, I can ride you. Yeah, you I, I, saw, I saw that in um, the, the, some of the footage I saw. Yeah, and, you know, that's cool, I guess. But, like, other than that, like, if Yoshi doesn't even play that completely differently, like, he can't, like, throw shit, like, in the Yoshi's Island games, then, like, why why do this? This is such a weird... Me? Because Yoshi's the kitty character? Like, this is fucking Mario, everything's kitty? <laughs> I don't know, maybe, maybe they just kind of, one of those things where it's like development time and they were just like, eh, fuck it. Like, yeah, maybe. They're guess. adding a lot already. Who knows? Um, the new power-ups are cool. Um, there's only four power-ups. You get the Fire Flower and then you get, um, Elephant Mario, who, honestly, elf, Elephant, the like Elephant power-up is cool. But it's not the big gimmick of the game. Uh, it's very understated. And that's fine. Because to, to me, the gimmick is the, the wonder seeds yeah. that change everything. I don't I don't want the power-up to be half the game because it's meant to feel... But that's all, like, I don't, I'm just saying the gimmick as far as like all the art and everything. And, oh, yeah. Like, um, that's what's always constantly shown. I honestly, to the game. I like the other two power-ups more. El- Elephant is cool. Um, you're much larger, so it's obviously easier for you to take a hit. But... Um, you can destroy things in like one hit, whereas other times it would take you like two or three. Um, you can fill your nose with water to like water plants and find secrets and stuff. Uh-huh. Um, and you have a, a no swipe attack that like you know extends your range a bit because otherwise you don't have a melee attack at all. Gotcha. Um, so especially if you're like trying to jump on a ledge and there's like a Koopa coming, you can. Um, it, it's got utility, but I like bubble and drill more even if they're more simplistic i find that they they change your approach to the level design more because drill you can just pop into the ground be invincible to everything and pop back out whenever you want and you can do the same thing in ceilings it doesn't let you go through walls but still floors and ceilings that's that's a lot yeah um and then bubble you just shoot out a slow moving bubble and it travels along for a bit before it pops um especially in combination with certain badges that give you more mid-air time, you can just go over entire certain <laughs> stages. It's specifically because, you know, the, most levels are not that vertically tall, but a lot of the extra difficult stages, they just kind of, like, zigzag through a giant open air space where there is no bottom. You just you fall down and you die. So the levels that are meant to be the hardest in the game, you just... You spew out bubbles and jump off them at just the right tempo, and you keep it up, and you're fucking done. <laughs> and it's it's not that difficult. Huh. It, it takes like three minutes to get it down. It's not weird timing like the Cape in Mario World. Yeah. Um. But uh, cool. Let me break the game. You know. Let. Because otherwise, it's not like the game teaches you to do that anyway. That's something you find out for yourself. <laughs> otherwise, the bubbles are just you can jump off them to get a little bit of height, or you can trap an enemy. Um, 
so Bumble might be like my new favorite Mario power up. Oh, but it doesn't get like patched or anything. Oh no, no. If they have it by now, it's because it's, yeah. it's not a glitch. It's just it's you just are function. naturally using the physics of the game. There's nothing about it that's really unintended. Um, in fact, I, I'd like to imagine the development team probably saw it and was like, oh, yeah, let's keep that in. Okay. Fair um, enough. Oh, I forgot about that too. Uh, I wanna, I wanna make a note about something. Hmm. Um, there is some news that came out a couple months before the game, and uh, I think a lot of people got the wrong idea from it. People seem to think that the devs were given as much time as they wanted to make the game. No, the fuck they didn't. <laughs> they got as much time as they wanted to make a prototype before they were given a proper development timeline mm. to build the rest of the game. Because, you know, you don't, you don't really think that they just coincidentally finished the game in time for the Christmas season of 2024 when Tears of the Kingdom and Pikmin 4 were months and months earlier. <laughs> no. But the, the prototype to, to come up with the ideas, the themes of the game, the art style, the mechanics, that they were given enough time for. Yeah. Um, and that, that's where it counts anyway, because after that, it's just like, okay, let's put everything together. Exactly. Like, you need that good development time to even, like, have... The, yeah. The, from... That's the toughest part, is coming up with the game's identity. And after that, you can just polish everything to, to its bitter end, so... Yeah. Um, but that's that's really it for Wonder. Yeah. Um, it's very solid. It's, it's, it's easily my favorite Mario game, though. There are others I still enjoy. I like World, you know? Um, okay. Odyssey, there are parts I like and parts I don't, but this one is like consistently fast-paced platforming fun. Starts off nice and easy, gets difficult near the end. Everything's pretty. It's just good. And it's my game of the year! <gasps> Done. Will, what's your game of the year? You don't have one! Uh... I didn't think about it. Yeah! My throat hurts so fucking bad, bros. Well, while Drew recovers from his throat hurting, I, I will do a quick... We, we did a three fucking hour podcast on Tears of the Kingdom, so there's not much to say other than I like the game. I think it's a good game. But they added so much more, two more layers to it already. Two and... One and a half, really. One and a half layers to a already enormous game. and uh, But I would like to, for the next... So the game see a different Hyrule, different things going on, and just just different pace altogether, maybe. But um, yeah, that's just summing up Tears of the Kingdom. I obviously give that game a fucking ten out of ten all around. But but is it your game of the year? <sighs> no, it's Pikmin Four. Pikmin honestly, fans rise up. Oh, sorry. Honestly, Little Gator Game is my game of the year. Because it's so, it brought me back to such nostalgia that I hadn't felt in so long. And it was, it was so completely like, wow. Like, this, that, like it's been so long since I felt this. I'm like, it was just so intimate in that way. But, um. But is it your, would you say that's your game of the year for non-2023 games? You know what, sure. I'll, I'll say that. Okay. Um, for tw- it'd probably be two. Wait, Tuesday even game. more than Bug Fables. <laughs> yeah, I'm asking the hard questions. Yeah. More than Bug Fables for yeah. last year. Yeah. Um. So tough question, but what I will say is. They're really two different types of games. That's fair. Uh, I have to put them in different categories because Bug, Fa- Bug Fables is good at telling a story and making you live through its characters. Really, what is being capitalized on in Little Gator Game is the nostalgia for your creativity and plus the creativity that you're watching in the game. Okay. Like, the game's all about creativity. The game's all about, like, hey, I just want to play. Well, we gotta do our thing. Well, what if that turned into a game? It's literally... That's another thing I didn't mention about Little Gator Game. The kid goes to everyone and wants them to join his game, but they're like, well, we gotta do shit. And he's just like, fine, I'll help you, but then you play. 
he always wants to play and it's like that that kind of kid thinking where it's like oh i just want to play i just want to play yeah and you just like but really it's it's all fun anything you make is fun like just that's kind of the moral of that game it's like anything can be fun if you let it be I, I do want to say the reason I, I did this whole... But Ryan, is it your game the... It's because I thought it was going to segue into your final game, and I'm sorry I didn't think this through. <laughs> Don't worry. Uh, because before Tears of the King... Or no. I think it was a month after Tears of the Kingdom. I got We Love Katamari Reroll plus Royal Reverie, which I did play. What is the Royal Reverie part? So that is an add-on to the game, much like in... Uh, Kirby Return, Return to Dreamland Delu- Return to Dreamland Deluxe. Uh, there's the Magalore segment. Yeah. Well, they have the King segment, which it, was not in the first game. But yeah, that's brand new, right? That's yes. not from like some other game. And it's like specific shit you have to accomplish. Okay. Um, base game. <sighs> Let me put it this way: the first two Katamari games are what everyone will call the best games. Because they are the absolute... They were made by the series creator. The guy who started... The guy who basically penciled in every single fucking aspect of these games. And he, that, of what he wanted. And these are the remasters. <laughs> and so, like, you really can't go wrong unless you just fuck it up. So, that it, it's exactly what I expected it to be. Which is... It is a celebration of Katamari Damacy in every way. Like, with, with the first game people were excited at something new for the second game what he really brought forward was a thank you to the fans and this is that game this is a thank you to the fans yeah we love Katamari he's and that's why on the cover it's uh, the prince opening like a door to the house and everyone's there with their Katamaris like wanting to play with them because it's like oh okay uh, there's even a stage called a million roses that was to signify oh a million fans we got like a million because he made a mil- like I think a million from the first year that the first game sold, so um, or something like that. But he, that was like the ultimate uh, stage. He that was that's like the very final stage you unlock in We Love Katamari is a million roses, and it's very cryptic because <laughs> it's just like it's just a single rose that suddenly talks to you when no other amid objects talk to you really, and it's and it's just like a million roses. It's under tip. Got it. And it's just like, what? It's just like, but yeah, you just go around and like, it takes days collecting these roses. Cause they're not like, it's not like the other catamarans where you just get bigger. No, you just stay the same size and you roll up like all these like bunches of roses, which are only bunches of 10 and then regular roses as, uh, as people dance around you. Huh. So it's kind of like celebratory in a way of like reaching a bunch of, di- it's, it's a lot of symbolism, but other than that, it's also just fun because this is the first game that allowed you to play as other cousins. So you kind of got a feel for like, oh, that's my favorite Katamari, or that's my favorite uh, character. Yeah. Uh, as well as uh, this game already is the GOAT because it comes with a uh, music pack, which everyone loves the Katamari music. So if you yeah, love that course. music, then you can make your own playlists and shit. You can have your favorite playlist and just put that on. Nice. Um, and yeah, there's certain stages like, oh, make the biggest catamar you can with only 50 items. And so you gotta be careful of what you're rolling into, what's moving at you and everything. And it's, it's really just a complete experience onto its own. And, uh, there's even more like little things that you can fit your guys out with, like little presents, like, uh, one of them's like a weird, like... Like, you know, like, when someone has, like, a weird, out, like, costume where it's, like, oh, there's, like, straps and there's, like, a crocodile or something on them or something like that, or, like, a duck, something like that, like, around their waist? Yeah. They all kind of have their own version of that, where it's, like, oh, they're all different animals and for every single category. That's, like, a present that you get for, that unlocks it for all of them. You can also have a camera, uh, and... I don't know why, but when if you stop mid game, you can use the camera to find like Namco things like uh Oh that's sick. The um The Pac-Man Ghost is one. Does, is it, it, does it actually go into like first person mode? Yeah. Oh dude. It goes into like a first person mode and you can like look around and everything and there's there's some that that's are fucking insane. fucking hard to find. 
But it's kind of weird because you're being timed usually in these games, so it's yeah. like, what? <laughs> you do that later on. Yeah, you do that as like a... Through. I haven't even touched it, but like... Uh... Yeah, there's, there's presents and cousins that to be found in, like, literally every stage. Um, and some stages, like, really are heavy on completion. Like, the, the king really loves the size for the catamaran, so you want to make them as big as possible. And uh, the, also the whole game is that, oh, the king basically has... Because Katamari got popular, the king developed a fan base. So now <laughs> the fans are like, I want to see a Katamari like this. And he's like, we can do it. Prince, go. <laughs> <laughs> do so my bidding. Basically, that's every Katamari game. He just follows the king or king's orders. like, fine. Uh, there's one, like, he even helps other people because um, there's one kid who's like, it's too dark. I can't study. And so he's like, okay. Roll up as many fireflies as you can in this time limit and bring them back and roll this kid up. It's just yeah, like... I, I like the contextualization of your missions. Yeah, and, and there's, like, reasons behind them, too. And the, the so many, like, just weak... Because Katamari gets weird. We all know it does. Oh, just, of course. It's, but, it's that trademark quirky humor. Yeah, and it's just... There's just so many fun missions to do and so much shit that I just can't even begin to think like, man... It's it's always going to be fun. And then on top of that, they added Royal Reverie, which is um, so basically as you are playing through the game, you're unlocking like story cutscenes for what is essentially how the king came to be the king. OK. Uh, however, they're kind of like what they did was they expanded on some of those uh, things and the king, you now play as the little king in some of those, like, scenarios where it's, like, uh, he has you, like, boxing against a certain, like, rabbit that's a champion or something. It's just like, oh, well, the king's going to show him now. He's going to roll up a Katamari and roll him up and stuff like that. So it's like, nice. so there's little, I think there's five. There's five different stages, and um, they each are about, like, different things. Like, one is uh, the, the older king is testing n new king's bravery. He's like, go into the haunted school and get five instruments that keep waking me up or something like that. And it's weird shit, but it's like, oh, so... And the mission is don't touch any ghosts, because if you do, the stage ends automatically. Oh, nice. So, that was challenging. And plus, they're like, ghosts fucking zoom by at a million miles an hour. But fuck, it, it's still, it's just fun. It's There's a lot that can be done with those stages, and I certainly can't complain whenever it comes to Katamari. Because it's, it's like, especially with the first two games, like, they're so beloved already. And, like, I, I've i replayed those games so many times, I would love to know a, an actual number on the PS2, because that's what I played them on first. And so, yeah, they, they still hold up very, very well. Um, I, I'm glad I bought it digitally, because I wouldn't have wanted to sell that game. I, the one part that, you know, outside looking in, because I, I played the original Katamari a bit before, and I I just don't drive with the controls. I know you get used to them, but it's like, it's just, it didn't feel intuitive to me. Okay. Um, but I, I appreciate everything else about the game, so I like people, I like watching people play it, at least. Um, the one thing I'm disappointed is, you know, we've had these two remasters, and we still don't have a Pikmin crossover. Yeah, that'd be fun. It'd be peak. Nintendo's that, that best be franchise and Nintendo's best franchise. Hashtag don't at me. They're, um... I wonder how you would react to, um... Hmm. What, what would you say was the main problem with your controls experience? Just just that you felt the Joy-Con... Or the, the joysticks were weird? I mean, like, it... It makes sense. To, I shouldn't say they don't feel intuitive, but it's no other game asks me to utilize both sticks at all times like this to to have to focus on it. You know, usually the control sticks feel I don't want to say secondary, but there's more to what you're doing, and the, hmm. I, don't, I don't quite know how to describe this. I, I kind of see what you're saying, but um. One of the reasons I love uh, Katamari Forever, which is the PS3 game, 
which is like a best hits of like a bet like kind of like the best hits from all the other games yeah um one of the reasons i love that game is because it has a a jump button and it's not like because like there's kind of like the go back and forward back and forward on each uh, joystick to go forward and power up yeah no this one's just a trigger that it, i prefer yeah and it it um at first it's asking you to like move the controller and shit and i'm like oh with i tried gyro? that at first it's telling you to do that but it doesn't tell you you can also just push the button okay. so when it's when i figured that out, i was like this this helps way more because sometimes you get stuck on obstacles sometimes you just can't you don't want to control certain ways you just want to jump over shit yeah and it's just like that added a lot more that one jump added a lot more than I would have ever really thought. So, the, the, I can see what you mean. Where, where uh, there's there's something a little bit to be desired with the controls. Um, like I, I wouldn't ask the game to even be different. It's just like eh, I don't think it's quite for me. I, I think also the the first game is much more time time based. I would say. Um, a lot of stages in the second one kind of give you that free ability to just kind of fuck around. Yeah. And um, there's eternal modes that obviously you can just keep going until you want to fucking stop. Okay. Uh, so th so there's there's a lot of shit where I'm just like, there's just so many pluses for me for and for a lot of Katamari fans that I can't say anything bad about it. But yeah, that's that's we love Katamari slash Royal Reverie, and I don't know. I hope one day that. Katamari uh, forever comes to Switch, but that's or why, why get a or they make a new game that too. But Namco has shown that they are not that great with creativity. That's okay. It's fine. Is it? You it's just fine. I don't want to get Sonic superstars. It's fine. Is it? It's fine. True, right? Sean.